Hare Krishna. Today we have uh, Madhu Pandit Prabhu, who is the president of the Iskon Bangalore, iconic Iskon Bangalore Temple, as well as the uh, very uh, well-known uh, social organization and the and its chairman of the Akshay Patra Foundation, Madhu Pandit Prabhu. Here, we welcome you to this uh, show. And uh, firstly, I would like to congratulate you uh, on the uh, on receiving the Padma Shri Award, which I feel is definitely an honor to you. But more than an honor to you, I think it's an honor to our Acharya Shila Prabhupada. And uh, thank you for uh, uh, bringing uh, this honor to Shila Prabhupada. Uh, I think uh, I should also take this opportunity that this honor belongs to not only to you, but also to all your team members who have uh, strived to make this happen. So today I wanted to discuss on a topic uh, on which you are on a war path for last 18 years. So I think you know what is the topic about. It is about the whole Guru issue and uh, we would like our viewers to know why this uh, path or this war path that you are on for the benefit of them. We would like to have a small discussion on this. We welcome you here and I have some questions for you to ask. So thank you very much for coming here. So uh, coming to the topic of the day, um, I would like to know and for our viewers to understand what is this whole Guru issue about. In brief, please tell us what the Guru issue is all about. As the name itself indicates, the issue is about who is the successor Guru after Srila Prabhupada in ISKCON movement. <coughs> Guru is very essential for every devotee which is the fundamental principle that is being taught by Srila Prabhupada. That one should accept the shelter of a bona fide Diksha Guru. So, in ISKCON after Srila Prabhupada left this planet in 1977. We have been following a particular system of initiation wherein 11 disciples of Srila Prabhupada, they claimed in 1977 that they were actually appointed by Srila Prabhupada as his successors to continue the chain of disciplic succession. So we also believed, most of the ISKCON believed, but as time went on, 1980, 1981, 82, 83, certain developments in ISKCON like some of these gurus falling out of grace, falling for worldly material pleasures being sannyasis and being revered as people who are as good as Srila Prabhupada and according to Prabhupada's philosophy they are as good as God, they are to be worshipped as good as God. Then they started falling from grace. Devotees started questioning. Maybe it is not true that Prabhupada appointed them. And then eventually devotees, there were a handful of devotees even in 1977 who actually approached the then governing body which was filled with these gurus that Prabhupada did not authorize you people. Then once these gurus started falling from grace, there was a bigger appraisal within the movement and questioning was there. And what happened was by then these gurus, these 11 gurus, they had made so many of their disciples and they, they became less and less de dependent upon the rest of the older generation of their god brothers. 
and they put them in a very embarrassing situation in the temples. Eventually, many of them had to leave. So slowly by 1985-86, whole of ISKCON had you know, very few Prabhupada's original initiated devotees. Most of them had to leave ISKCON and they were outside ISKCON. So because these so-called rebels and troublemakers are you know, less and less, ISKCON seemed to be running well because the temples got populated with new disciples owing absolute allegiance to all these gurus. And when one guru in one zone, you know, fell down from grace, then the rest of the gurus all, you know, they put up a very uh, courageous face that, you know, Maya is very powerful, so anybody can fall down. And in this way, they started making a change in the entire philosophy that guru can fall down. Okay? So, that was the next questioning that came from devotees. No, this is not according to Prabhupada's preaching that gurus cannot fall down is what Srila Prabhupada says. Only one who has reached that stage, he is worshipped as good as God. A person who is a pure representative of Krishna is the one who is a bona fide spiritual master who delivers the disciples from this material world. He has to be free from maya. Somebody who is, if you read Srila Prabhupada's books, it becomes very clear that somebody whose hands are tied cannot liberate somebody else. He has to be free. He has to be liberated. The Guru has to be liberated from the three modes of material nature. Guru has to be liberated from this material pleasures and material desires and all kinds of things. And his, the Guru's position is that he is situated at the lotus feet of Krishna. However, as more and more gurus started falling down, there was you know, no other way for these gurus except they slowly diluted the position of guru and practically established among the entire communities that guru can always fall down. But this was never taught. These very same level people in 1977, when no untoward incident had begun, they themselves declared at that time that Srila Prabhupada's teaching is that Guru will not fall down. Only Mahabhagavata can be in the disciplic succession, implying that they are of that caliber. But unfortunately, history spoke something else. Then that something called, uh, uh, they changed the philosophy that Guru, there is something called a a, a, you know, less than perfect guru. Mind you, we are not talking about Siksha guru, we are not talking about, you know, there are in our philosophy of Krishna consciousness, there are two gurus, two categories of gurus, Siksha guru and Diksha guru. Siksha guru is, you know, everybody is a Siksha guru. Every child who, who tells somebody else Krishna is supreme personality of God, it is also a Siksha guru. We don't want anybody to get, get it wrong that, you know, we are against gurus. No. We are against unauthorized, self-made, self-declared gurus of that caliber as Srila Prabhupada's to sit in the chain of our disciplines at section. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, Amarajna Guru, everybody should become guru. Otherwise, how the movement will spread? Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's movement is meant to make gurus. That means to meant to make teachers who spread Krishna consciousness, but not to take the position of a pure devotee directly representing Krishna and free from all uh, material desires. So the crux of what you are trying to say is that basically post Srila Prabhupada in Iskon. There was a, like you are going on saying how gurus fell down and there was no uh, qualified guru to take the place of Srila Prabhupada. 
So you are saying that there was lack of qualification of qualified or uh, lack of qualified people to take up uh, Srila Prabhupada's position and unqualified people took up uh, Srila Prabhupada's uh, position and uh, you felt this is improper and you wanted to correct the system and that's why you took up this cause? See, we were very much part of this system. I joined in the year 1981 as a full-time missionary. I was very much part of the system. I had also taken initiation from one of these 11 gurus. But in 1998, the then chairman of the GBC, he fell from grace. And the entire movement at that time was really believing that Okay, many have fallen out, but this guy is the guy who is a shining guy who comes forth as the successor. This feeling was slowly building up in his con from 1990 to 1998. And naturally being a member of that group, it was a quite a big shock to hear that he fell from grace. He ran after somebody, some woman massive and then this was shocking to us well you see like for example being in this movement myself also um, if you see from 19 the uh, actual guru issue started from 1998 from 1998 to 77 it's more than 20 years so in this 20 actually year, guru issue years, for us began in 1998 correct okay. so I'm saying 21 years from Jayatirtha <coughs> to many gurus kept falling. But why did we take it up only in 1998? So if that was the issue, yeah. then uh, we should have started our uh, 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 rebellion much earlier. Why did we choose 1998? Right. What is this affection with the year 1998? Right. See, in, in fact, in 1984 uh, or 85, yeah, I went to Mayapur festival. At that time, there was a big issue with them, you know, where who were, who were not gurus, Prabhupada's disciples, they made a 50-man committee and they approached the GBC and they challenged them that how is it that you are the only gurus? What system you are following is not correct? And they did not have a solution. They only said that, yes, something is wrong. You can't be sitting in the disciplic succession. You are some other kind of gurus, small gurus, and this, all the kind of things. But uh, uh, the GVC at that time compromised with this 50 persons who were also the original disciples of Prabhupada. And that is the first time they declared that, yes, we did a mistake. We were not the... Only 11 people told to by Srila Prabhupada to continue the discipline succession. We are very sorry for it. You can also, all of you can qualify to be the spiritual masters. And that way they opened the door for more gurus. By then, by 85, 84, there were, there were 10 gurus. One had fallen away. And there were, everybody knew in the 50-man committee, two, three others had big problems. So they minimized the position of the gurus and they pulled in more people. Now I was in Mayapur at that time. I am just three, four years old in, that, in the moment. And I go once in a year to the Mayapur festival. So at that time, you know, you know, naturally in Mayapur annual festival time, everybody talks so something is going on in GBC, something, something big is going on in GBC. And so then uh, I also, you know, went and asked one of, uh, you know, my uh, God brothers, Bhakti Purushottam Swami, I asked him, uh, what is this? Because he, he was a senior to me. He said, what is this about all this going on in the GBC? Oh, that is all. They are envious of this. God brothers are envious of our gurus. Actually, then I said, no, they are saying that there is no appointment. Of, no, no, no. There is an appointment tape. Prabhupada appointed these 11 people. Okay. Moment he said, Prabhupada appointed those 11 people and there's an appointment tape. To me, that matter ended there. I said, okay, it must be something else. Let's leave it at that. 
this was my only encounter with the guru issue after that i came back to bangalore this was in 1984 84 or 85 i came back to bangalore and continuing and anything you used to hear you know we used to think simply think that uh, you know uh, interpret the same you know way in which i was given this perspective that you know some people are gurus some people are not gurus so those who are not gurus are envious of those who are gurus etc left it like that but then in 1998 what happened was it all happened simultaneously <clears throat> when i went you know for the delhi temple inauguration that time we were all given you know accommodation together and i was with uh, uh, you know madridaran prabhu and uh, yashomati nandan prabhu rasaraj prabhu they were all there in the next room each other and so one of the days when they came to my room and I, you know i had a, 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 a unresolved management issue in my head there was a devotee who had joined this temple on one mataji uh, brahmacharini and there was a proposal for uh, her from singapore temple uh, the vice president of singapore temple he wanted to marry her. and when the proposal was almost getting finalized somebody all of a sudden you know put in my ears that hey, hey, hey no singapore is a rithvik temple i said what is a rithvik temple i mean i didn't know i just left you know okay okay hold it hold the proposal so i had this in my agenda somehow to resolve this and give an answer to them so therefore that time i i used that opportunity and asked these people hey what is singapore what is what is this rithvik temple and all this and then uh, uh, you know um, Adridharan Prabhu, he said that, uh, oh, you have not heard of Ruthvik? I said, no, I have not heard of Ruthvik. Then, uh, uh, Eshamati Nandan was quiet. Uh, Rasraj Prabhu was saying, you have a laptop? Yeah, I have a laptop. Okay, you type July 9th in the folio. I typed July 9th. Then I saw the letter. Then, uh, you know, I saw the 11 names. First time I am seeing the July 9th letter. so i was not shocked i said uh, yeah it's all right there must be you know uh, rithvik oh propat calls them rithviks so afterwards there is an appointment separate appointment of these 11 people i myself told remembering what i heard there. immediately you know three of them in one voice they said absolutely no letter after that this is the last letter that propat wrote regarding appointment of gurus i said is it true really no we challenge you you find out if you want but they were very very careful to speak to me because in those days it is such that you know it has become a culture that anybody against the gurus mean their heads will get chopped off they will have to leave the moment so in, they were little hesitant but moment they saw my curiosity is it really true there is no other letter they all jumped together and said yes there is no because i was a blue eyed boy of the gurus you were giving them a lot of money yeah no i'm not giving them a lot of money that they were getting a lot of success that my guru system works understand yeah jeb taka swami is my disciple built a big temple and see you know this kind of uh, you uh, were their gateway to their popularity exactly and, uh, exactly in fact in the entire iskon after shila prabhupad left this planet this is one of the biggest projects that you know came up so naturally it was a feather on the cap of the guru system according to them so and it was anti climax when you know i came out of the system as much as rice was there that much was their image fell down so that is how uh, uh, you know i was not aware of any of these things till 1998 1990 the moment i saw that then you know things started working in my mind i went the very same day I, in the lawn jep takka maharaj was sitting i went to him and asked pay me your obeisances that one maharaj you know like this uh, i heard there is a letter like this and you know is there a letter after that and is there an appointment letter after that so he did not answer anything he only you know <coughs> heard these questions it increased more you know it increased my <coughs> curiosity then from there i was straight away going to mayapur and then mayapur next day was the vasa puja of jep takka maharaj and you know every year i am the star there who 
organizes the entire vas puja in a very pompous manner glorifying the guru as he should be glorified as good as god i was the leader and but that year i had no inspiration so i va vanished from the scene <laughs> everybody was searching and looking for me and then it so happened that you know after that i came back to bangalore and then as soon as i came back to bangalore uh, this uh, adri dharan prabhu he knew he has succeeded in uh, you know shaking planting the yeah, seed yeah planting the seed so by by mail i got this book final order and uh, meantime uh, in the intervening 2 3 months i was quite disturbed i was quite disturbed uh, after the festival and uh, then this book landed on me you know in meantime uh, adridharan prabhu managed even before the book could come what is this entire issue about guru it came out in sunday supplement in calcutta in daily telegraph a full page on this guru you know self made gurus so that also opened my eyes i started showing to all the devotees and then followed up with this i got this book and then that time it was very clear july 9 letter and many things were being explained all the quotes were compiled by many devotees working hard together for several years so very nicely combined and that changed the entire no, thing from an external from a outer external perspective mm. like it's very like if you see the state of uh, current reality in, in this whole episode the kind of hard feelings and the shapes and the tenor this whole fight has taken over yeah it's very difficult for a layman to accept <coughs> that uh, it it started off by you hearing uh, three people calling you in a room and telling you that uh, you know there's uh, they were appointed as uh, uh, rithvik for anybody to accept this is the motivation for this whole thing to take go to the courts fight publicly on tv channels uh mud slinging and the kind of um, uh, outright kurukshetra war that has happened in the last 18 years if you say this is the trigger and this is was the motivation it's very difficult for a person to accept yeah uh, it's it's true it's true we it's always when when we say this are the this is the reason which you say this is the reason for a ordinary person na this cannot be the reason to go to this level of fight there must be something more behind the scenes and uh, this is just a smoke screen that has been created to achieve some other ends yeah what do you have to say for that you see in fact when the guru issue began mm. the first visit of jayapataka maharaj in bangalore was he put me put a garland up on me and in front of many devotees at his witness he told why don't you become a guru in iskon so i was shocked now you may ask why are you so shocked about that also for understanding this you need to understand the perspective from which we at least i have joined this con we had answers to all questions in life from propas books that's why we dedicated our life we were so impressed with the concept of bona fide spiritual master that's why we 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 surrendered to shila propa it's a very deep principle for a serious pra spiritual practitioner mm. i in principle i strictly followed the principle that whomever i took initiation is as good as god and that is why i did my you know duties and with heart to do whatever one should do to a spiritual master the level of worship and everything i also followed that you see here there is an element one who understand the philosophy of krishna consciousness properly 
he he bases his belief in guru based on certain shastric injunctions isya deva para bhakti yatha devo tatha guru one should have the same level of faith that one has in krishna in guru so this is very important and unless one develops guru bhakti one cannot develop krishna bhakti these are all the principles of gaudiya sampradaya so we have created those foundation in us and then there was one question which remained unanswered for me all these years from 1981 from the first time i heard jayati the fell down from that time this all the philosophical questions were answered one question remained unanswered because i believed then that propad ordered them how could a pure devotee like shila prabhupad make this mistake which creates so much turmoil among in devotees lives when a guru falls down like when harikesh swami fell down in 1998 there were 5000 disciples he had and what a turmoil for them and what a level what pedestal they kept him and they worshiped him and it was devastating to all these spiritual children like abusing children it is abuse of faith so one has to understand the sense of feeling getting cheated because we have no other life we have given our life for this cause for us it is our lifeline it's not that you know spiritual life is some side life and we have a life in our institution you have your position you have your your president you have all your facilities and your life is running therefore you know what is no there are no parallel lines for us we are dedicated day and night whether as as a washing pot or a pujari or as a temple president does not matter the true follower of propads movement is feeling completely dedicated to guru and krishna so unless someone understands this position of guru and what is expected by our philosophy what that disciple should have what kind of feelings towards the guru unless one, one understands these things that sense of feeling cheated that sense of feeling cheated the deep emotion of feeling spiritually cheated does not uh, you know uh, nobody can understand who does not know these things the unfortunate thing there is there is a genuine turmoil but the outside world cannot understand this what can be done as much as possible we take shelter of the truth and we say okay propa did not appoint them but the outside world will think so what propa did not appoint them all right they gave a try what's wrong <laughs> for us it's not that for them it is such a simple question so unfortunately there will be a big communic- there will be a big gap in understanding of devotees turmoil of getting cheated in this guru system and it's a fact that you know if the entire issue was kept ought to have been kept within the movement going out is another kind of violence upon the innocent living entities who are just waiting to develop faith in krishna many innocent people when they see that we are fighting among ourselves it's a very sad so it is very painful for us it's a very sad history of iskon very painful for us okay. and we minimize it okay. that's all we can do now you figured out what's the problem what's the reason of the problem so what's the solution you're not providing us a solution you say okay the gurus are uh, not qualified right the gurus are uh, 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 don't have authorization to keep their position etc etc which we are hearing so what is the solution that means uh, the there will be no gurus no is currently full of gurus but not diksha guru everybody will yeah, be disciple the distinction of between diksha siksha etc etc because our philosophy <coughs> talks about responsibility for one person to take you back to godhead therefore our philosophy says you can have one diksha guru and many many siksha gurus so the con- principle of diksha guru even according to management you see everybody is responsible means nobody is responsible so in the same way in spiritual realm also the guru there are two types diksha guru and siksha guru diksha guru means he is responsible when he takes initiation when he gives initiation he says i will take you back to godhead so that spiritual responsibility is established between it's a contract that he undertakes he as a servant of krishna he undertakes to take this devotee back to godhead 
so we cannot change the philosophy of krishna consciousness this is you know this is gaudiya vaishnava tradition we belong to this tradition this diksha guru is extremely so important so you are saying that shila prabhupad will take all the devotees back to god and he is the diksha guru of all the yes. devotees we are saying he will be the and diksha guru and i can guru. tell bhakti siddhant saraswati takur is my diksha guru i can tell shat goswami is my diksha guru hmm. why should i restrict hmm. myself to just shila prabhupad hmm. Why, why we have to? Because Srila Prabhupada set up an institution, and in the institution is the founder Acharya, and it is understood that every institution has to run according to the dictates of the founder of that institution. So, if if the founder Acharya has given in July ninth a directive to the entire temple presidents and GBCs that this is a system, then unless there is an alternate letter or authority from Prabhupada, it is our duty to follow what Srila Prabhupada. Uh, has written in that letter and imagine one thing before 1977 it is not that everybody who got initiated by shila prabhupada has seen prabhupada not that everybody has had direct instruction from prabhupada so the situation that exists today where shila prabhupada is not physically accessible to devotees like he was accessible in 19 pre 1977 this situation existed for majority of the devotees and they made spiritual advancement they read prabhupada's books they followed its instruction they developed faith in prabhupada they progressed in spiritual life so if this scenario existed then why it can't exist now prabhupada does not you know he is eternal spiritual master is eternal just like if spiritual master came when pre 97 he came to bangalore initiated and he went to chennai you know that you know nobody has any relationship with him till he comes back to bangalore so like that prabhupada will be preaching in some planet now is a eternal preacher of chaitanya mahaprabhu now the solution that you are giving <coughs> like for example as spiritual people everything should be based on guru sadhu and shastra yeah now you are giving a very unique solution what is the basis is it your mental speculation or is it based on guru sadhu and shastra no you see <clears throat> when prabhupada has explicitly given a system in writing for first and for the purpose the letter begins like this for the purposes of first and second initiation in iskon that means for certain function within the institution this is the system you should follow prabhupada has very clearly given that directive when he has given a very clear direction who am i to question shila prabhupada is it according to guru sadhu and shastra i would presume that it is very much within the guru sadhu and shastra and later on if you really went go into the prabhupada's teachings you know it will take a longer discussion yeah, please, no i just want uh, for our viewers also to hmm. understand hmm. give us some specific uh, uh references from guru and sadhu shastra from the prabhupada's teachings itself yeah. which corroborates your idea that this can continue yeah for instance the idea of disciplic succession mm. one of the allegation they say is do you say the parampara ends so yeah. now disciplic succession normally one would normal understanding is there is a one physical one person after his life another person another person another person and it continues and here you people are saying disciplic succession ends with shila prabhupada actually that is not correct it doesn't end with shila prabhupada what we are when you go deep into what is disciplic succession prabhupada explains continuation generation after generation of the disciplic conclusion is called disciplic succession I mean, this is something that when you go deep into Prabhupada's books, you will understand what is disciplic succession. In other words, we have a, a, a kind of a, 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 a gross understanding of person after person. Now, if you see, look at this. Prabhupada says simultaneously, "I live in my books. I don't die." Now, if you take all those things, you know, you just put them all together, you will see that disciplic succession continues as long as Prabhupada's books are unchanged. the conclusion is protected in fact in 1977 gbc meeting a definition of gbc was drafted and prabhupada proved that 
that GBC is the ultimate managing authority of International Society for Krishna Consciousness, of which His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada is a final authority, etc., etc. <coughs> That's the manager. We are talking about the spiritual no. part. No, 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 no. In that, he also said the final authority. In other words, his, they have the mandate to preserve and preach the philosophy of Krishna consciousness as presented by Srila Prabhupada. So it is not only about management. That is talking about, in fact, the answer to your question remains there. GBC has to protect the disciplic succession. In other words, if on the other hand, today what has GBC done? They have changed Prabhupada's books. So the parampara is lost. Just like human beings existed, Krishna says, I taught this to sun god and then, you know, then it came down. So and don't you think this changing the books is a little exaggerated? No way. How can you say it is exaggerated? Some comma has been changed, some full stop has been changed and then you quote Prabhupada's, oh, you cannot change a comma, a full stop. And then you make a big case I mean, out of it. I mean, there may not be 5,000 commas and full stops in the entire Bhagavad Gita. Can you believe that there are 5,000 changes in the Bhagavad Gita in one book? Entire paragraph has been re, re paraphrased Which is, you know, completely Prabhupada's way of speaking, Prabhupada's way of, you know, giving the purports. That's completely changed. They wanted to improve the English. They changed the entire purport. I mean, that's not fair. Prabhupada taught out of this very Bhagavad Gita, as it is. There may be comma mistakes, there may be mistakes that, you know, some uh, wrong translation, a few words here and there. I mean, a decent way, a gentleman's way of doing this to put some asterisk and say that this could be a typo and therefore this is what the real meaning that is there. They could go back to the manuscript and check. Such kind of things one, one can, but one should not touch the books of Prabhupada, touch the words of the Acharya. After he has left, there is a principle like that. Prabhupada himself talks about it. Because why does Prabhupada talk about all these in those days? Because these very same things they did about Bhakti Siddhanta Sarsotaku. About on his books, they did the same thing. In fact, Prabhupada used to tell them that you please read, if you want to read Bhakti Siddhanta Sarsotaku's book, he said pre 1932, what was us there, you please read. So it's the same situation today here. They are editing and changing Prabhupada's books. And it's not a, you know, an excuse. It's a very, very serious thing. Especially in the context of the question you asked about disciplic succession. This is the... See, there is, a, there, is an ex, there is a gross external meaning of something and there is an essence of something. And when you read Prabhupada's books, you understand what is the essence of disciplic succession. Disciplic succession means you pass down a mango. Same mango should be passed down as it is. In the same way, the same teaching should be passed on as it is, which is a very important principle. Prabhupada goes on repeating it. He says, if I have any credit, it is because I simply repeated what my spiritual master taught. So it's not, uh, you know, acceptable at all. So they are the people, even though they are, they are, they are maintaining physically chain of disciplic succession. Oh, next I am guru, I am guru. The essence in essence, this disciplic succession is stopped there. Whereas we, we don't have any physical succession, but we are following the essence of disciplic succession by adhering to every word of Srila Prabhupada and his teachings as it is. We don't want to read the books that are changed. We want to read the original books.